I wasn't going to refer to this paper, but um, I decided to change my notation on the fermions. Are we run, are rolling already? Um, and uh, turns out that I thought I could get away with a simple notation, but I don't think so. So this is Fizz Rev A. 59, number 2, and it's page 1538, and the year is uh, 1989. This is quite the louder in me. And, um, remember, as we were writing it, Point. Uh, we were sitting together in the office down there, and I flashed, I flipped to, a, to the browser and we learned that Princess Diana had been in the car accident. Not that either of us knew Princess Diana. At least I did. All right, so. I think I better start with uh, the fermionic particles from the top because that's unfamiliar to most people. All right. So the idea is that you is take the square to zero. The most general function is just a plus b theta. You want the integral of s theta d theta to be the same as the integral of f of theta plus, say, zeta d theta. And this one is an integral of a plus b theta d theta. So this is a integral d theta plus b integral theta d theta. And on the other hand, this one is the integral of a, let me write it down completely, a plus b theta plus zeta d theta. And so this is then um, a plus b zeta integral d theta plus b integral theta d theta, and if these two are going to be the same, then what you want is you want um, this term, which is different from this term, to vanish, and so you adopt the rules. Integral d theta is zero. Integral theta d theta is something as in path integral land, you might as well take it to the one. Um, so let me just edit things here. I changed notation last night, and so uh, this is a good day to watch for typos. Now, um, a single fermionic degree of freedom would have sought the anti commutator psi. Psi dagger, which is the same. That to be one, and psi squared to be zero, and also psi dagger squared to be zero. By the way, Heisenberg wrote a book dwelling on the simplicity of these commutation relations um, you know, many years ago. 20 years after he invented quantum mechanics, maybe 30 or 40 years after this. Um, anyway, I just mentioned that. So what are the limits on those integrals? Uh, um, well, we're going to be thinking of them going from minus infinity to plus infinity, but um, it 
it's a good it's a good question that you as a question you're asking. Oh shit! I forgot the chocolate. Hold on. Just as uh, psi has psi dagger, so too uh, any Grassmann variable that we'll use has a conjugate theta star. And uh, we'll say theta star is zero. We'll also say theta star integral d theta star is one. Okay. So the same rules as for theta. Okay, now we're going to define the ground state as um, psi on G, where of course psi G is not equal to zero. So you pick some state that's not annihilated by psi, and then you hit it with psi, and we're going to call that the empty state. And psi squared on, not psi squared, psi on the empty state. Erase it. Psi on the empty state is therefore psi squared on G and then zero. Okay, so I'm reviewing the uh, fermionic canonical from the top down. Changing, uh, I decided to change the notation late last night. And I thought I could get by with the simpler notation that I introduced last time. But I think if you want the path integrals to come out right, I think you need to use full-blown notation in this paper, which is a paper Glauber and I wrote about 11 years ago. On the other hand, you don't need all the details of the paper. It's essentially, so. Um, okay, so then we're going to define a, for any uh, theta, we're going to define a state e to the psi dagger theta minus a half theta star theta on this ground state. Another way of thinking of it is to, to expand this thing and you don't get very far. But you do get more than two terms. You get three terms. Okay. Uh, any further term, for example, um, this term times this term would have theta squared. This term squared would have theta squared. This term squared would have theta squared. So that's um, what theta is. In that paper, this is called a coherent state, but I don't know if we need to use that term. Okay, so what is the effect of psi on this state? Well, psi on this state is, it's, it's easiest to see, I think, in this form. It's 1 plus psi dagger theta minus a half theta star theta vacuum. And psi on 1 comes through and annihilates the vacuum. Psi on theta star theta, where you have a couple of minus signs, but then it will annihilate the vacuum. And so this is just equal to psi psi dagger theta vacuum. Now psi psi dagger is 1 minus psi dagger psi theta, I'm calling this vacuum. 
uh, psi annihilates the vacuum, and so this is just theta vacuum. Now if we look at theta on this say, coherent state theta, we have theta times 1 plus psi dagger theta minus a half theta star theta vacuum. Well, hold it. This, this is bound to be wrong. Well, theta is going to annihilate both of these terms. And so this is just theta on, on the ground state. And so that tells us that psi theta is theta from vacuum. Theta theta is theta vacuum. And so these two things are equal. So theta is an eigenstate of psi with eigenvalue of theta, a Grassmann eigenvalue, and um, uh, So what is the commutation relation between theta and theta star? Do they actually come Theta and theta star. Didn't I say that? Ah, oh, and I somehow I somehow left it out. Uh, yes, absolutely. Marvelous question. And also theta in the, the fields? Do those anti as well? Yes, right? yes, yes. Yes. The, the, the general rule, by the way, in this whole game is everything fermionic commutes with everything else fermionic. And the commutator is always zero unless it's psi with a psi dagger. And then it has to be a particular psi with the same psi dagger. And moreover, theta and d theta are zero. And theta star d theta is zero. And d theta d theta star is zero. So, Really, everything commutes with it, and anti commutes with it. And um, that means that it's fermions are designed for computerized brains, not for human brains. All right. So that's why these things can be called coherent states if you want. Namely, you can have the eigenvectors for some. Anyway, I'll call it. Holy shit. That is not good. All of a sudden, my notes went. <laughs> um, Alright, so we're now switching over to the older notes before the changes. And uh, so it's going to be a little rocky here. Um, Alright, so let me get to where we were. Okay, well, the bra corresponding to say some variable theta, zeta in this case, is zero, one plus zeta star psi minus a half zeta star zeta. So it's, or I could have written it as zero, and then you'd have this structure, but when you adjoint it, you get E to the uh, zeta star psi minus a half. And this turns into itself when you adjoint it, so it's minus a half zeta star zeta. So that's another way of writing. Now, the, the full space of states for one variable is C times the ground state plus D times the first excited state, which I'm going to just call. And what you can show is that the, inter the identity operator is the integral I'm using 
theta star rather than theta bar, even though it's much easier to write theta bar, because later we're going to want to use a bar to mean I psi dagger gamma zero, um, or just psi dagger gamma zero in S controller land. Um, so with the new notation, you don't need the explicit e to the minus theta bar theta here. But um, I think it's better to put it here, as, as we'll see in a moment. Well, maybe not a moment, as we'll see before the end of the hour. Okay, and so this is equal to um, I'm going to put a couple of these problems on, uh, uh, as homeworks that you can do over the Thanksgiving vacation. Sweet. What? Sweet. Do these thetas, I know for coherent states of light, the coherent states form an over-complete basis? Yes. Is that the same case for these? I think so. Um, I haven't thought of that uh, lately. Let me just... Let's just see one. Yes, the coherent states, in fact, are over completely. Um, it turned out that we could um, do for, coher for fermionic coherent states everything that we had done 30 years earlier for almost 40 years earlier for bosonic for bosonic. Um, it was a little surprising to have that it worked out to that extent. Okay, well, the next thing is to uh, generalize this to several variables, theta 1 to theta n, and um, one uses the same rule, namely that theta i, theta j is 0, and also theta i, theta j star, and so forth. Um, and now we have psi k, psi l dagger. Now this is delta k l, but everything else ends up here. And now we're going to take the grand state to be a product of the psi k's on some state g. And now we pick a state g. So this is tables 1 to n. We pick a state G that survives this treatment. So we're going to get zero. And um, I must say, I, I'm struck every time I look at this, this definition or that definition, I'm uh, reminded of Dirac and his vacuum. Remember the Dirac vacuum and Dirac C has all the antiparticle states built. Um, this, this state is very much like that. Because you see, if this were, so to speak, a direct field, it would have particle annihilation operators plus antiparticle creation operators. And so this guy is basically filling the C. Now, um, because it would be hysterical if we all had to do a paradigm shift back to direct the Dirac C. Um, anyway, just a uh, an aside. Okay, now we're going to define this thing as e to the sum psi k dagger theta k, and then as he, oh, not as there, but as over here, minus a half theta k star theta k on this ground state theta. And of what I'll say to you without, I don't think I'm going to, I think I'll leave this for you guys to work out over Thanksgiving, because frankly, if you look up the paper I referred to today, we can find everything along. Whether you want to work through that paper or do it yourself, I'm not sure which is easier. Um, 
Okay, so these are simultaneous eigenvalues of uh, all of these variables. Notice something that I should put in the notes, but I didn't think of it. Suppose we have psi psi L psi K theta. Well, this is going to be psi L theta K theta, which is going to be minus theta K psi L theta, which is going to be minus theta K theta L theta. Okay? Because it's an eigenstate simultaneous. And then these guys anti-commute, so we can then rewrite this as theta L theta K theta. So we have this simultaneous eigenstate. Notice that this wouldn't work if you tried to say psi L psi K on some real, some function. So if you weren't using Grassmann variables and you wanted this to be psi L R K, where this is a real number, then the psi L would float through and you'd have psi L R and you'd have R K R L R. And, well, if you switch these two, you'd get a minus sign, so you'd have minus psi k psi l r has to equal r k r l r. But on the other hand, you know from just doing this that this is minus psi k psi l r. This would be minus r k r l r. And now you have um, the puzzling situation that these two things are equal and opposite and um, that doesn't work for uh, let's see I, I, let's see tell K So now we have psi LK equal to RKRL and then minus RKRL. And um, clearly that doesn't work for real numbers, but for Grassmann variables we have no trouble because there's that automatic minus. Okay. Oh, Jesus. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Two things left handed. <laughs> I'm not going to get a call from the New York Yankees this, this winter. <laughs> oh, God. All right. So are there any questions? As, I've say, uh, as I say, this is puzzling stuff, unfamiliar. And um, By the way, whether this the extent to which this is important is going to be, I mean, it's somewhat important because you can do fermionic patterns, okay. But whether it's somewhat important or very important is going to probably be decided by the experiments of LHC. Namely, if they discover supersymmetry, then all this grass analysis is going to be much more important. But on the other hand, they make some unexpected, surprising discovery and find out that supersymmetry is just a just a wrong, then uh, then um, this will be oh, well, 
moderate importance. It will be very important. So, so, so admission operators constructed out of these various bodies are So we would expect only zeros and ones to be our eigenvalues for say Hermitian observable. Is that true? So you're you're well let's see. Grassman and Hermitian What I'm trying to say is if I don't yeah. Hermitian operators. So you're saying what if psi is Hermitian um one these things might I had some Permission I, combination of side dagger and side, like side dagger. Right, side right, dagger. right. Um, I, that's a that's an excellent question. Let me think about it. Um, the I, I, coherent I, state is no longer. I can say that. Right. 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 Um, all right. Let me let me let's talk about it afterwards. Offhand, I would say, what's wrong with having the eigenstate be this? Okay. The eigenvalue be that. In other words, you could define a coherent state in terms of some of theta star as well as theta. And then you could have an eigenstate of, well, there's a little bit of a problem there, though, because you see what we were doing was we were having, the whole, the, the reason for the asymmetry here is that you get psi by this trick. In fact, the trick is even it's more evident here. You find you define zero in terms of a state that's annihilated by all these guys. That means that psi annihilates this, but psi dagger doesn't. So um, so this whole structure is. is such that you have, I mean, it's like for coherent states in, in quantum optics. You have eigenstates of A from the right and of A dagger from the left. Um, on the other hand, you certainly have coherent states that are eigenstates of, say, alpha star. Alpha is just an arbitrary complex number. And um, one could define without any trouble, you could have this be theta star. Um, and I suppose you could, you could replace theta here by theta plus theta star. And the algebra might go through. All right. Do you need more? Pain? No. Good question. All right. So um, here's our direct product state, and we've we've gone through that. And um, now, what's the inner product? Well, the inner product of zeta with theta is very much the same as the inner product, did I even, oh well, that's right, I've changed the notes and I didn't, I forgot to do the inner product over here. All right, well let me do the inner product for one variable. It's, um, it's e to the zeta star All right, let me, yeah, all right, here it is. Zeta star, theta minus a half, zeta star, zeta minus a half, theta star, theta. Okay, so that's the inner product for a single uh, degree of freedom. For a, for n variables, then it's e to the sum over k from 1 to n of zeta k star, theta k minus a half, zeta k star, zeta k minus a half, zeta k star, zeta k. Oh, that's right. As I said, I redid the notes and changed the notation and printed it. 
really scary to put things in the plane. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so what's the identity operator now? Well, it turns out it's just the way it looked before. step is to go, uh, I want to go from theta to, I don't know, for some, maybe this was silly, but I decided to go from, uh, from theta to a variable uh, chi, which looks more like um, a Dirac, what looks more like the Dirac sign. So I, I'm introducing then So these now are Grassman variables, and this is true whether or not you have a DAG or that. Grassman fields? These are Grassman fields. Um, and of course, we're now going to have the term of the Dirac field at equal time. The equal time anti-commutator is delta and then delta Q of X minus. And uh, if you cover this up, you get zero. If you put two gaggers, you get zero. Uh, we're going to define the ground state then as, in fact, this direct. This, this really looks like a direct scene. Now, let me switch from here to K. K and uh, X. Well, all right, let's go back. And I'm going to go to time zero, just as we did. Uh, so the grassman field is always anti-commune, regardless of. Hold on, I just made a. The grassman field is always anti-commutative, yes, yes, yes. regardless of where they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah everything computes with everything except for psi n with psi n dagger. And, and again, we're, we're going to be doing equal time, so I might as well set these time to, I set all the time to equal zero. Weinberg instead has everything at different times. And I don't know. All right. So we find some state G that uh, survives uh, multiplication from the left by all the psi fields at all points, all components, and you don't get zero. And so uh, again, this is exactly the so does this fix a Dirac C. Huh? Does this fix G in any sense? Does this force G to be the state with? Particle in both these positions, or well, frankly, I mean, that's a great question. Here, I'll throw it right-handed this time. Um, that's a great question. Uh, I think, I think effectively it does. Namely, uh, it's the state that has uh, it, it's analogous to in Fox in Fox space having uh, every state of the antiparticle filled, which is exactly the direct state. Um, it's, it's, it's in, you've got to admire that guy, um, that people really rebelled against the Dirac C uh, maybe 10 years after he introduced it. You don't see it in any of the modern quantum field theory books, but here it comes seeping up through the floor when we try to do fermionic bandwidth. And so uh, it's kind of fun. Is there, is, there a tree that came to is there a need to do it this way? Couldn't we just postulate that there's a state vacuum that gets killed by all the size? We could, but this is um, obviously what it is. Yeah. I mean, it, 
All right. Now, what is this generalized coherent state? Well, it's going to be e to the integral sum over m. m just goes from 1 to 4. It's over the components of the Dirac field. And it's going to be psi dagger m of x and 0 pi m of x uh, minus a half uh, pi m star of x pi m of x So we got a single species of fermion? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's not okay. let's not knock ourselves out with more than one firm field. But clearly if you had a boy you'd do the same And what one can show is that psi m of x and zero on the state chi, this gives us chi m at x state chi. And um, the inner product of two such states, zeta and chi, well, it's going to be the analog of this thing. And so it's going to be um, e to the integral and sum uh, zeta m star of x i m of x minus a half zeta m. Let me just do zeta m star zeta m minus a half i m star. So that's the inner product. And now the identity operator is an integral pi, pi, and now it's product over all m and x of uh, d pi star d pi, and we're going to write that as pi, pi, and I guess we might as well write it as d pi star d pi. By the way, this is the way the pattern integrals are going to be written on the field. And so now you see why this thing is gauge invariant, namely that you get an e d i theta here, e minus i theta here. So the grass and fields transform the same way as the parent fields? Uh, yes. Because I now see this is a terrible notation. Um, X is where the Ket is touching the bra. In, in tech, when it's latex, it looks all right, but this way it doesn't. Maybe I should try to do that. Okay, so. Uh, I think we're just about on schedule. All right, well, what is H0? Zero is the uh, Hamiltonian for the Dirac field, well, it's sidebar, gamma dot brad plus n i d x. There's something some, somewhat surprising or striking about this, namely, there aren't any time derivatives here. No time derivatives. And sidebar, I mean, there are so many minus signs with the Grassman variables that I just stayed with one word notation. So sidebar here is I psi dagger down to zero. On the other hand, in pest controller notation, you just cover up the I. And the reason is that the Weinberg has an extra I on his gammas because uh, he has an opposite. And of course, you know what the gammas are. So I mean. All right, now here, I'm departing from my notes because with this improved notation, things are a little better. So let's try, let me see how I want to say it. Let's try chi prime e to the minus 
minus pi epsilon H zero pi. So that's the basic uh, structure there. So then this is going to be uh, chi prime e to the minus i epsilon integral psi bar down to nine. Grand plus m psi e to dex chi. Now, um, what are we going to have? Well, we're going to have this thing is going to turn into chi, this thing is going to turn into chi bar prime. And we're also going to have chi prime chi e to the minus i epsilon integral chi prime bar gamma dot grad plus m chi. Notice this color chalk just does not erase. Is the bar of the grassing field? The yeah, 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 it's the same. Chi bar is chi. High star, and if you want, you can tip it up inside. That's really getting kind of okay. All right. So what does this give us then? This gives us this inner product, and this inner product is e to the integral pi prime. Well, it's actually chi prime dagger chi. In fact, that's what I should have said here. This thing here. Oh, it has to be a dagger? Well, it effectively is a dagger. If you're summing over this, then you can switch the matrix notation. You have the integral zeta dagger chi minus a half zeta dagger zeta minus a half chi dagger chi in cubed x in this, where this, these things are all four vectors in the sense of vectors with four components. So this is this, minus a half chi prime dagger chi prime, minus a half chi dagger chi. Okay. And then minus i epsilon chi bar prime gamma dot grad plus m chi. Okay, so that's what that thing is, is that long interval. Great, I didn't bring, or did I, let me see. No, these are my old notes. All right, so I'm going to have to redo this. What, you, you can rewrite this, well, what, what I'm going to say is the following. I'm going to say that chi prime minus chi is epsilon chi dot. So this structure here, we can take one half of this and subtract, subtract this. So then what we get here is that this, that this thing this inner product, chi prime e to the minus i epsilon h zero chi, is if I take half of this minus this term, I get e to the integral half um, epsilon. Okay, but it's not the one I want. So this is going to be e to the one half epsilon chi dot 
Pidanga dot um pi. Okay. Then subtracting these two, I'm going to get minus It's, it's very hard for me to go from one to the other when I can't see both. Um, these two, chi prime dagger, and then it's going to be minus chi dagger. And there was the minus. Okay. So these are the two terms, and then we have minus. Um, Now, this thing, if we um, integrate by parts, well, let's remember, there's a prime missing, isn't there? Yeah, it's a prime. Yeah, thanks. Um, if we integrate by, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to string a lot of these guys together. In fact, I could do that at this stage. Let's now put together a zillion of these. Okay. And the way we put them together is remember the integral over the Grassmann field of just the outer product of the coherent states gives the identity operator. And so what we get then is pi at, say, big T, e to the minus 2i big T h0 chi of minus t is then, and it's going to be a product of all these guys. Notice, by the way, everything up here is quadratic in Grassmann quantity, so everything commutes with everything. You can relax. What well, pressure drops by 10 points. <laughs> um, and so what you have then is an epsilon turns into dt. Okay. So we have an integral. of um, a half chi, oh, okay, also, the difference here between prime and chi is of order epsilon. So we ignore it. And so what we have then is chi dot dagger chi minus a half chi dagger chi dot minus i chi bar gamma dot grad plus m chi. What are we just d, doing? d fourth x. You said chi for the chi prime? Yes. After, in other words, there's an epsilon here. So in this part, we can ignore it. We then respect the difference here and write it as epsilon pi dot. Then here, everything now has an epsilon, and so we can ignore the difference between chi and chi dot, chi and chi tron. Now we can integrate by parts. And when we do, we just get minus there. And so this becomes just minus like that. All right, now, um, what is chi dagger? Well, what is chi bar? Chi bar is I um, chi dagger down to zero. So, Chi dagger, and we're here in Weinberg land where gamma zero squared is minus one. So multiplying both sides by gamma zero, I get a minus sign on the right, 
So I get minus i pi dagger equals pi bar down to zero. And then multiplying both sides by i, I get pi dagger is equal to i pi bar down to zero. So now this thing is equal to e to the integral minus pi pi bar gamma zero pi dot minus i pi bar gamma dot grad plus m pi d four x. Now we rewrite this as e to the i integral minus pi bar, and now we have gamma zero d zero plus gamma i d i plus m pi d fourth x. And so now this is e to the i integral minus pi bar gamma, you want Greek or Latin? This is the action density for a free fermion field. So what we have is that pi, pi t e to the minus 2i t h0 pi minus t is, oh, well, of course, I left out all these, all these differential variables. Uh, we don't have any here, but when we when we sandwich a zillion of these guys together, what we have is d chi r, well, d chi dagger, d chi, and this is d chi dagger, uh, dagger d chi. So all of these things are d chi dagger d chi. Oh, what the hell is this? As well, as say d chi r. So we have then half, and, and of course, if you're integrating, then you need to have a big integral sign somewhere. All right, so this is I integral L0 of pi d4 x d chi bar d chi. Now, here we're integrating not simply over all from m equal to 1 to 4, all space points, but also all time points. And so we're integrating over all fields that go from chi sub minus t at infinitely far in the past to chi sub t way far in the future. And this is then e to the i s0 chi e chi bar. OK, so that's. And of course, there's some normalization factor if you want. Although the way we set things up, there really isn't any normalization factor. We've set things up, haven't we? Uh, all of our identity operators were, were strictly these Grassman integrals. So it may be that we have a one now. All right, let me get a sip of water. Any questions? It's one of the nice things about relativity. Um, the derivatives, the normal derivatives, transform opposite to the four vectors. In other words, they transform in you know, two different ways. And so, 
So this, this is just as, for example, d mu j mu equals zero is the relativistic special relativistic invariant representation of a concern. So this is the action. And um, in the case in Pest and Schroeder land, I, I don't remember exactly, but I would expect that the minus sign goes away and you get an I here. Just guess. So the I have to admit the pest control notation is a little better to be doing unless you're doing it with relativity, general relativity, in which case you have that. By the way, there was a did I mention the nature paper? This may not be important, but one of the funny things about You know how this, this thing called the renormalization group, which I just terribly mis misnamed. Um, it's, it's hype almost as bad as that associated with Princess Diana. But anyway, um, if you have energy go out like this, then if, if you want to be able to say do, do calculations at tree level as accurate as possible, then you use a coupling constant that somehow includes the higher order correction, or at least some of them. And in that case, tree level means no loops? Yeah. It's one of the nicer terms. You know, if you have a diagram that's where you have several particles going in, So um, the strong interacting coupling constant goes down. The SU2 coupling constant goes down. But the U1 coupling constant, well, first of all, these guys don't meet. So the strong one goes down. The weak one goes down. And the U1, well, of course, there is this unification. I'm ignoring that. But the U1 does this, goes up. Well, there was a will check about four or five years ago, wrote a paper saying that if you included gravity, this thing eventually would go back down, would become asymptotic. So saying that as you increase the energy, the electric charge essentially come, becomes stronger? Or it becomes weaker. weaker. Uh, because of the effects of gravity. Oh, right. I mean, first it gets larger and then it gets smaller. Right. Yeah. And um, so this guy, Tom, his name is David J. Tom, at Newcastle. But he wasn't bringing coal, he wasn't carrying coal to Newcastle. Um, anyway. He showed that if, oh, anyway, so Wilson, Wilczek wrote this paper and various people jumped on him and said, well, he had not done things quite right. And uh, so Tom's claims to have done it, uh, have corrected some minor details that Wilczek might have uh, skipped over. And um, Tom's then shows, shows that, uh, that, in fact, the, um, Coupling constant does um, go down at um, does become asymptotic to the degree like the non abelian gauge theories because of the effects of that. Um, but it seems to happen only within a few orders of magnitude of the Planck energy. All right, well, anyway, that was that. Now, uh, you can imagine what we're going to do here. What we're going to do is we're going to introduce um, other uh, uh, um, we're going to do, we're going to introduce this, these, these um, external currents. But this time, the external current has to be a external current. And so it's going to be something like this. 
it's going to be e to the i integral L0 of time d4, well, let's not say d4, let's, let's put this in the same integral. So then it's going to be plus um, zeta star chi plus chi star zeta e4 of x. And then what, what you're going to be able to do is say the variational derivative of z of zeta with respect to say, well, if you just do it with one zeta of um, x, then, well, let's do zeta star and let's do even a particular index m, then this should be um, i integral um, chi m of x e to the i, well, I can just, e to the i integral l plus zeta star chi plus chi star zeta. And in fact, these are daggers, aren't they? And um, similarly, a second derivative then, and if we put an i squared here, zeta star m, say zeta n of y, then this should be an integral uh, chi m. And let's Let's see, I have to be a little careful because these things are um, anti-commuting variables and so it matters which one. So let's, let me do it more carefully. We've done this thing. So literally I think I should have this one like this. And now we do. Okay, so I'm differentiating now in this case, P chi bar, P chi. And so now um, differentiating here, um, it's going to pull down this chi dagger. And um, if we want it, we can imagine that this is over here. And so, well. sorry, I didn't really, I, I really thought that. I didn't think I'd get through all my notes. Plus, my notes got froze in, in cyberspace somewhere. Also, um, Tom put the video of the last lecture somewhere in cyberspace and nobody knows where it is. He thought it was on my computer. It's not on my computer, unless he changed it or it some weird name. And, um, but it's now on my computer, he says, so I'll post it anyway. So, don't have a worm in the department. Anyway, so this second derivative is going to give us this. On the other hand, uh, if we put in the actual fields here and did a time ordered product of these fields, then in other words, if we had something like chi t time ordered product of um, And I don't want chi, I want psi. So I want, and let's see, what do I have over here? Psi n, psi n dagger of y, I think. Psi n of x. And um, so this whole thing 
time t. Now the, the, the now the main work of this e to the minus two i t h zero is to take these fields which are defined at zero and make them defined at whatever the time is associated with y and x. And um, the, and then there's a factor of um, e to the there's a factor of e to the minus i. Well, if we insert um, all right, I'm going to have to do this a little bit. So I'm leaving out lots of steps, and um, one needs to put in the vacuum state and so forth. Uh, in fact, what I should do is let me have the vacuum state. And um, in fact, to, to put in the vacuum state, what we would have is phi minus pi minus t factor like this, and then we would have pi of t, pi of t, so we could do that. So in this way we can get, in other words, we take the, or it's on filling in steps, we, we multiply, we have this thing, and this has um, effectively an e to the minus i th0 here and e to the minus i th0 there. All right, now I think it's pretty much kosher. And um, now we integrate over these guys and these guys, and so that gives us e to the minus 2i e0 t vacuum time ordered product of a psi dagger n of y psi m x vacuum. And then this is going to be path integral of 0 chi t chi, uh, oh, and, and this thing is already our path integral, which is to say e to the i s of chi um, plus i integral, well I'm sticking in, or if I don't, if I don't put in the j yet, then this is, um, chi dagger n of y, chi m of x, um, I minus t zero t chi bar t chi. All right. So that's that. There, I filled in some of those steps. And um, if you do the same thing, leaving out the fields, then what you get is essentially vacuum vacuum, and you get. Uh, divide one by the other, and this is one, the phase factors cancel, and you get vacuum time order product psi dagger n of y psi m x vacuum in this right, vacuum, and then you get a ratio of path integral, zero chi t e to the i s of chi chi minus t zero d chi bar d chi divided by integral and it's the same thing um, let me see same. oh this one has chi chi, da, chi dagger n 
of y pi m of x sine. So, so this has this in it. Pi dagger n y pi m x and then pi minus t zero. And down in the denominator, you have everything except these fields. So you have this e to the i, and this is the undoing perturbation series. So this is the free action and um, pi minus t zero d pi bar. Okay, so that's the ratio of those. All right, now the, the razzmatazz is. Remember, for the boson field, I was able to show this sort of quasi rigorously. Here. Um, let me just say that it probably can be shown. I <laughs> haven't worked it out myself in a very long time, if ever. But the idea is that you can essentially neglect these guys as long as you add i epsilon terms. I mean, those zero and chi t are both coherent states, right? So. That's right. It'll have this exponential form. So yes. Modifies the action, right? Right, right, right. Yeah, okay. You're, 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 that's, that's brilliant. And, um, um, and then the question is do I identify this zero with that zero? And, um, That's a bit fussy because because what we mean by here is the ground state, and what we meant by there over there was just something that was annihilated by all the psi fields. So those two things aren't necessarily the same. Um, in any event, uh, what 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 uh, what happens is that this eventually becomes just e to the i s zero of chi pi n dagger of y pi m of x d chi bar d chi divided by e to the i s zero chi and then uh, d chi bar d chi but now um, you, you've got comma epsilon here so that you've got the i epsilon terms which makes the propagators right the propagator for the fermion okay given that well I'm over time but given that, what you do is you then say, oh, this thing here divided by zeta of zero is um, uh, a way of generating these things. And then, then you figure out what this is, and you can actually compute it, and you find out what z is. And uh, we'll, we'll do this next. We'll do this on Wednesday. Um, any questions? Does anybody did, did anybody ask a question and not get short term? Um, and I was as I was erasing boards before. We, we we can turn it off. Um, as I was.